go live. Hi Tumblr, it's Bree. I'm here with my first viewer questions video for my 600 followers. Actually, now it's 605 since I posted that uh, that particular announcement. I'm still reeling. I am seriously still reeling. There's 605 of you. 605 of you fabulous people and are you are you lost? Do you need directions to a quality blog? I, I'm sure I can give them to you. I feel like I have to step up and start, I don't know, being more quality now. I, I, I have follower expectations to live up to. So I've got a slew of questions to get to, so we'll just get right into it. Um, Yanis wants to know, do you ever cross LARPing and witchy things, witchy things, to make the experiences more real? Um, no... No, I don't. Um, considering that the uh, the costume and makeup departments at the LARP that I go to, uh, there's a link posted with this video, uh, they are just amazing. They make some very realistic creatures, and the people who portray them, our, our cast folk, are very, very good at, uh, at keeping the immersion level up. And, uh, and making things very real for, for us to begin with, especially when there's combat going. So I don't need one single iota of magic to make that any more real than it already is. Uh, that being said, I have practiced witchcraft with people that I know uh, from LARP. Uh, actually, Lynn, who I've mentioned in post before, who, uh, who Nen and I are teaching, uh, we met her there, and that's where we usually uh, get together. Uh, Lizzy wants me to talk about what sort of witchcraft I specialize in. She says, I know you're a hedge witch, but get specific. Um, well, for starters, I'm not sure I'm actually technically a hedge witch, because my understanding of that is that a hedge witch is someone who actually crosses the hedge. Someone who goes and takes that step from here to there. And that's not something that I really do. I try and stay away from hedge crossing or astral travel and uh, such things like that, um, simply because I have enough trouble with the denizens of this plane. I don't think that I want to be, you know, exposing or subjecting myself to whatever might be working someplace else. Um, I don't know enough about it, and I don't think that I'd be uh, skilled enough to, uh, to, to work in those particular areas. Now, that being said, uh, if you want to get specific, I know that hearth witchery is uh, is technically usually something that focuses on the hearth, obviously, and 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 fire. My personal practices tend to deal more with earth. Um, if you want to assign an elemental classification to it, I work very extensively with plants. I use stones and crystals a lot, um, but. You know, Nen will tell you, any ritual that I've ever been involved in, there are candles everywhere. Everywhere. Um, I, I, of course, make them. A lot of you have bought from my shop. Thank you so much. Um, so I do feel that draw to fire uh, in my practice. And if I had a home that had a proper hearth, like an open hearth, I think I would be doing my witchy stuff there all of the time. Witchy things at a hearth, all of the much. Yes. Um, but yes, uh, like I said, it's mostly herbs, mostly stones. Um, I did study a little bit of herbal medicine. I am not licensed or, you know, professionally trained or anything. I don't have any degrees. Um, but I, I know enough that when I say, oh my gosh, I have a headache or I have a, sto uh, a stomach virus or my, my head is clogged up, you know, I can do something with that. I just reach for the Boxo dried herbs. And uh, any time that I'm doing a banishing or a protection or divination or charm of any sort, the first thing I really go for is the plants. Uh, Rhea the Singing Witch. If you are willing to share, what's one of your favorite cleansing methods? Um, probably my favorite one is, is, it's extremely simple really, it's just to light up 
some white candles on my altar, which is uh, actually just over there. Um, you've, you've all seen pictures of it. It's adorable, and I'm very proud of it. Um, I just, I light up a couple of white candles on the altar, uh, walk around the room a couple of times, and if there's something in there that I feel like needs to go away, I will tell it that. I will give it a nice, strong, you know, GTFO, this is my space, and get out of it. Um, there is, of course, a sigil on the mirror on the back of my bedroom door, which, you know, stands for you shall not pass, because... Let's face it, Gandalf knew what he was doing. Uh, and the door and the windows in my room are also lined with salt, which I have blessed myself. So, really, I suppose just a lot of intent and, uh, and candles and a little bit of salt does the trick. If I'm cleansing a larger area, uh, like I've done with this house a couple of times, um sage for some smoke cleansing works great um, if you don't like the smell of that I find that certain types of incense work very very well too and also they tend to be a little bit less expensive and uh, more easily renewed than you know just waving around bundles of white sage all the time because you know that that's becoming scarce because people are buying so much of it and the demand for it is so high so here's my little plug if you can grow your own sage, or if you switch to lavender, or rosemary, or any other herb that is for cleansing and protection, if you dry that and burn it, it works just as well as sage. It may not smell the same, but it will still serve the same ritual purpose. And that'll help the plant, you know, not go extinct, which would be awesome. Uh, Josh, want <laughs> Josh wants to know, why are you so freaking awesome? Inquiring minds want to know. You are adorable. Oh my god. Um, am I awesome? I don't know. Uh, I, I guess if you say I'm awesome, then I must be awesome. So thank you for that. Um, and as I'm, I'm still confused as to why when I follow certain people back, they've said, oh my gosh, I have to... You know, up the quality on my blog, my senpai is watching. I'm like, when did I become senpai? What the heck is this? Uh, my name is not May. Is, is it my or is it May? I'll say May. Sorry, dear. Uh, when did you realize that you were a witch or that supernatural things existed? I'd like to know if it's something that you always knew, felt, lived, or if you had a realization because I never had that sort of experiences, so I'm curious. Okay, um, realizing I was a witch was less of a, an epiphany and more half realization, half choice. Um, it came around when I had been struggling with religious issues for a number of years and just feeling disgruntled and disillusioned with the church and I was searching for something else that would give me the, the sense of self actualization and empowerment that I was looking for um, without certain constraints and um, maybe not moral issues but certainly um, certainly social political issues uh, uh, re related to church doctrine and I'll, I'll, I've said it before I'll say it again I have no problem with Christians by and large I think they are wonderful fabulous people I just, I, I have a lot of problems with, uh, with certain parts of church doctrine. So, believe me guys, it's not you. <laughs> it's not you. It's the men in the funny hats. Um, uh, it was about, uh, five years ago, I suppose, that I, I, I hardcore said, you know, you know what, I'm a witch. Uh, it was wishy-washy for a little while because I really wasn't sure, you know, how to settle into it. I didn't have a strong footing, and I've never had a teacher. I, I have never had a formal one-on-one -on -one teacher, you know, face-to-face. -face. I've actually learned more from books and from all of you wonderful people on Tumblr uh, than I ever have from anyone in real life, uh, from, from any one person. Uh, I, I should add the caveat that I did have a sort of teacher at one point. But, um, 
I didn't learn too, too terribly much from her um, past the very, very basics uh, because I didn't like the way she was doing things. It made me feel very uncomfortable and I didn't trust her. And I later found out that I was completely right not to do so. So I'm really, really glad that I didn't get myself in over my head there. Um, so yeah, and uh, about two years ago, uh, two or three years, was when I found, finally found my footing and was like, you know what, I don't have to account for, you know, anyone else's beliefs in what I believe. I'm just going to do what I feel is right. And I put on my pentacle and my pointy hat and I haven't looked back. And it's, it's very liberating. It's a lot of fun. I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I'm learning tons of new things and it's quite liberating. Um, as for supernatural stuff, I think, uh, I think I've known about that pretty much since I was a kid. Um, I was eight years old when I had my, my very first experience and, um, it, it only became more intense as I became a teenager. Um, my parents divorced when I was 12 and, uh, so I was going through you know, custody issues and issues with depression and your standard issues with puberty and, you know, starting middle school in, in a new place and in a new house. So while I was going through all of that, um, whatever it is you want to call it that I have, a gift, power, I, I, I don't even know what to call it. It just, it's there. Um, it, that's when it decided to wake up. And so I spent, oh gosh, um, four years, I think, from, from about 12 to 16, uh, wondering if I was losing my mind because, um, you know, whenever I tried to talk to anyone about it, they just blamed it on, you know, being a teenager or being depressed over my parents or, and it was always my favorite one to hear, looking for attention. Oh, I always loved hearing that. It made me want to hit people. Um, but yeah, uh, so the supernatural thing, that was more of an epiphany. That was a big realization. Um, I think I had always felt that things were around, but, uh, when, when certain things happen, I mean, when you are lying in bed at night and your closet door opens for no reason, you, you start to wonder. And when you hear footsteps in the attic and you're like, this stuff only happens in the movies, what's going on? You know, and then when you look at, you go out and you look at the attic door and the handle starts rattling. It's like, I can't ignore this. There's something going on. You know, I don't generally see things. Um, much more often I hear them um, or strangely enough, smell them. Uh, it, it's, it's the darndest thing. I have never been able to explain that particular one. Uh, but the Claire audience is, uh, is something that I'm, I'm working on, uh, on, on getting a handle on. Uh, Dear Society WTF, who is still one of my favorite blogs to browse when I'm having a really bad day and I need something to be good and angry about, uh, asks, how and when did you become interested in becoming a witch? Uh, I... Like I said, um, I, I put my foot down and said, darn it, I'm a witch, uh, three years ago. Five years ago was when I first, like, actually started practicing stuff. Uh, but I became interested in it when I was a teenager. Uh, like so many young girls do. You know, you get into high school and you're the outcast. You're the one that reads too much and sits alone in the library and study hall and doesn't have a whole lot of friends. So I started reading about supernatural stuff. I started, you know, questioning. I started wondering about things and then I started finding things out. Um, the whole, you know what, I want to be a witch thing didn't come until much, much later, but it's something that's interested me for more than half my life at this point. Um, and now the anonymous questions, oh, you, you dear Anani mice, you, you pulled out all the stops. Um, 
where do you get your supplies for witchcraft? Anywhere I can find it. Um, I have picked herbs during walks. I have gotten them from the grocery store. I've gotten them from specialty witching stores. I've gotten them from natural food stores. Um, the dollar store, Goodwill, Walmart. It, witching on a budget is something of a specialty. It, um, it, it's, you don't have to have big flashy props or anything to make the magic work. Just find what you can afford and, you know, work with that. Even if you, they're like, oh, have tall white taper candles. Screw that. Get little white tea lights. They work just as well and you can get a hundred of them for like two bucks. If you look in the right place. Which is why dollar stores are amazing. And Nen will tell you, she swears by finding stuff at Goodwill. You know, when we made up that basket for Lynn, more than half the stuff that was in there came from Goodwill. And it was in great shape. We washed it up and, you know, made sure that there was nothing clinging to it that might interfere with what she wanted to do. And it was perfect. She loves it. So, yeah, I get my supplies pretty much anywhere I can find them. Uh, my favorite places are um, River of Life in Lahaska. Uh, that's here in Pennsylvania again. Um, there are a couple of shops down in New Hope near Lambertville that I just, I love going to for little whimsical stuff. Uh, there's the Witch Shop and Mystical Times. And let's see, there's, there's also the Trading Post down there that has some uh, some southwestern stuff, and they have really, really good um, sage and cedar sticks that smell absolutely wonderful, um, as well as a bunch of, uh, of very, very interesting jewelry and, and curios and beads and stuff like that. So I've been able to actually find some good, uh, some good stones there a few times. And like I said, you know, there's the dollar store, there's Goodwill. Uh, there's a couple of places online. I like Star West Botanicals for uh, for bulk herbs. And for, uh, for tea things, they are pretty awesome. Um, I, I definitely love SpecialtyBottle.com for, uh, for my candle making supplies. But you know how it is. Give that witch a jar. Witches love jars. They have everything. You can order pretty much any kind of jar or bottle you can think of. And get it in bulk if you need to. And even if you don't, even if you only order a few they're still pretty darn cheap, which is awesome. Uh, and then, of course, there's Baba's Cupboard, which I'm very fond of. I haven't bought anything from them in a while, uh, just because I've, I've mostly been good with my supplies, but if there's anything uh, sort of obscure that I need, I go to either Baba's Cupboard or The Magical Cat, and they have just wonderful, wonderful stuff there. Uh, definitely Google both of those and check them out. I'll try and link them in the bottom of the post, but my attention span is about that big, so I'll try and remember. Uh, next question. Um, your blog title comes from Lord of the Rings. Are you freaking out for, I guess DOS is desol Desolation of Smaug, uh, this winter? Yes. Yes, I am. I can barely contain myself. You should have seen my face when I finally got to see that second trailer. I, I could not sit still. I had to watch it three times because I kept squealing halfway through and missing what people were saying. I'm, I'm absolutely just over the moon for this. I loved the, uh, the original Lord of the Rings trilogy when it came out. I was in college. I watched it over and over again. I still do sometimes. If I have a day where I just need to like sit down and get some handicraft projects done, I have the extended edition um, on DVD, I will pop that in and I'll, I'll watch the movies, I'll watch the appendices, watch the whole damn thing straight through and just leave that playing as background noise. And it's great. It's great for the concentration and great for having that particular mood. So, of course, when The Hobbit came out, I was thrilled to see that. Went to see it on premiere weekend. Um, almost went in costume. Should have, but didn't. And I was upset. Oh well. But I, I was amazed by it. I'm absolutely in love with the project, and I hope we get to see, you know, more 
uh, video blogs from them, and I can't wait for the extended edition of The Hobbit, and I cannot wait for Desolation of Smog. I am so excited. And actually, I'm kind of rocking the uh, the Dwarven ear gear today, uh, simply because I could. Here's the other side, too. There's no real reason for it. I just, it, I, I felt like it, and so I am. So, mm. Um, let's see. Anonymous asks, if you were a woodchuck, and a woodchuck could chuck wood, how much would a Danish cost? Fifty cents. Don't ask. Because. That's why. Because of reasons. Um, alright, last one. Uh, another Nani Mouse asks, can you do any impressions? Oh boy. I I debated leaving this question off. <laughs> Simply because this is where I embarrassed the crap out of myself. Uh a few. Yes. Um I used to do Stitch from Lilo and Stitch every once in a while. My name's Stitch. Does I have to go on the ship? Sit down and shut up, Father Rose, I'm recording here. And uh, if I have a sore throat, I can do Gollum very well. I understand that is something that's going around the internet today. Uh, maybe if I get bribed, I'll do that one later. So that's all of the questions. And now that this video is over 22 minutes long, I'm so sorry you've had to sit through all this, but I'm really glad you did. Thank you so much for following. And uh, at the next milestone, hopefully I will see you all again. So, bye!